We have a little change of schedule on account of um, Father having to take off um, and go back to his parish a little earlier. We're going to start off with Father Dominic's talk, Defeating Satan, who is seeking the ruin of souls. As many, if not all of you know, Father was ordained with his twin brother by Bishop by the late Bishop McKenna in 1988. He worked in California extensively as the pastor, Queen of Angels, in Santa Clarita. Uh, he's been there for 36 years. He's also the pastor of Immaculate Heart of Mary Church in Roseman, California. Um, he is the general treasurer for the religious congregation and the moderator of Mary Immaculate Queen Confraternity. He contributes regularly to the reign of Mary. And as some of you may not know, he used to be my teacher. So I'd like to please ask you to welcome to the lectern, uh, Father Dominic Redecki. If you could please take out your prayer card, the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. If there's um, some that didn't get one after the talk, they're on the, um, the stage. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Lord, grant that I may always allow myself to be guided by Thee, always follow Thy plans, and perfectly accomplish Thy holy will. Grant that in all things, great and small, I may do whatever you require of me, today and all the days of my life. Help me to respond to the slightest promptings of thy grace, so that I may be thy trustworthy instrument for thy honor. May thy will be done in time and in eternity, by me, in me, and through me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear beloved in Christ, not many people comprehend what eternity is. Fools that they are. Fools. We're engaged in a spiritual warfare between God and Satan for our immortal soul. The choices we make will determine the outcome. A woman from Chicago once told me that a demon said to her, we will battle for your soul your whole life. The holier you become, the more intense the spiritual warfare. Satan and the demons will fight you to the end and will not give up. Spiritual warfare is a fight to death, for until the end of time, the devils will use their angelic intelligence and strength to oppose and obstruct, obstruct all that is good. As a result of original sin, God punished mankind by allowing Satan to exercise a reign of death over the human race. This reign of death is manifested in many ways. Temptation, infestation, possession, obsession, and black magic. Demons intently hate us and can injure us in body and soul. Satan and the demons continually strive by lies, temptations, and false pretenses to seduce us to commit sin and thereby incur eternal damnation. We must fight against formidable enemies for St. Peter is written, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. Since time is short, Satan is trying harder than ever to make, take as many souls to hell with him as possible. Demons have a job to do, to destroy people through sin so they spend eternity in hell. Hell is eternal. It's permanent. It's total separation from God, total isolation, despair, helplessness, and torture with no respite whatsoever. The damned are tortured forever with everlasting fire. God is infinitely merciful but just. When the sentence is passed, there's no more mercy, and the soul's fate is sealed forever. Unrepentant sinners blame God for sending them to hell, 
but they really sent themselves there. They rejected God's infinite mercy and refused to repent before they died in the state of mortal sin. When we commit sin, we open doors to evil. Evil is very structured. Sin is also structured. Unless we're vigilant, sin will creep into our lives so slowly and seemingly small at first that it's hardly noticed. Nevertheless, this condition is extremely dangerous to the soul. Addictions and habitual sins usually begin with a slight temptation. The temptation must be quickly resisted by prayer and fleeing from the danger. If the soul repeatedly consents to sin, it may take a lifetime to conquer it. Satan promises happiness but only delivers momentary pleasure, followed by uneasiness, bitterness, guilt, shame, and punishment. Our Lord said, he who is not with me is against me. We must choose our master, God or Satan. We cannot hibernate or refuse to choose. There's a difference between following God and following the devil. When I follow God, I say, I will do what is right no matter what I feel. When I follow the devil, I say, I will do whatever I feel no matter what is right. Selfishness is a leading cause of problems in our relationship with God. When a soul cares more about himself or herself than God, there is a problem. Don't let ego get in the way. In our relationship to God, he wants us to conform ourselves to his holy will by our love and obedience. It's not about getting our own way. When we give up our own way or what we want for the love of God, we show that we care about him first and foremost. Why does God require us to engage in spiritual warfare in order to save our mortal soul? Just as God tested the angels and our first parents, he tries us in order that we may merit the happiness of heaven by our obedience. God gave us a free will to choose good or evil, and he will judge us accordingly. He provides all souls with the graces necessary for salvation. The greatest sacrifice of our free will is to offer God our love and obedience. Obedience is a surrendering of our will in order that we may fulfill the holy will of God. God's glory is then promoted by all that we do in order to be subject to him. This includes obeying the commandments, fulfilling our daily duty, corresponding with God's grace, overcoming temptation, offering our prayers to him, receiving the sacraments, performing acts of charity, etc. This is the object of obedience. If inspired by love of God, it is the supreme act of love. The humility and obedience of Our Lady were clearly manifested at the Annunciation when she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Conversely, the pride and disobedience of Lucifer were demonstrated when he told God, I will not serve. Our primary purpose in life is to glorify God and save our mortal soul. Strictly speaking, in order to be saved, we must be in the state of grace, pray, cooperate with God's grace, and obey the commandments. God wants us to be with him in heaven, where there's only good, love, joy, peace, and everlasting happiness. God loves all of humanity, and he does not even want one person to go to hell. But many choose to go there because they refuse to love God and obey his commandments. Instead, they choose sin and do what they want. Sin is disobedience to God's laws and an abuse of our free will. After death, unrepentant sinners lose their chance for heaven because they were stupid, trusted the evil that's in this world, and died in the state of mortal sin. God makes use of the demons to inspire us with a horror of sin and to increase our faith. Demons are like chained attack dogs that have limited power. They will assault and tempt us, but are restrained by God. Demons sometimes promise and give people anything they want, but they will take their souls in the end. 
damnation of human souls is what demons ultimately want. Demons are our ruthless enemies and want to destroy our marriages, homes, families, friendships, parishes, country, and our belief in God. Satan tells the demons what to do, who to tempt, and who to torment. Sometimes the names of demons signify their mission. Some they've personally dealt with in exorcisms include pride, vanity, suffering, control, deformity, despair, destruction, unforgiveness, depression, suspicion, hate, abuse, infirmity, seduction, tragedy, and torture. Demons relentlessly tempt us to commit sin, to be proud and self-centered, so we die in the state of mortal sin and spend eternity with them in hell. The devil never sleeps. Satan and the demons continually strive to ruin, frustrate, thwart, and sabotage our efforts to be holy. Don't ever underestimate the power and seduction of the devil because his traps and deceptions are cunning and innumerable. In order to draw people away from God and towards sin, demons put distraction after distraction after distraction before them. When souls become absorbed and attached to the things of the world, they become spiritually blind. Satan and the demons attack us at our weakest point. One of Satan's traps is a universal relaxation in all things relating to God. So many people don't want to have any kind of religion. They just want to do their own thing and worship at their own pace and in their own way. This was expressed by a fallen away Catholic who said to me, I'm committed to God, not a church. My personal relationship with the Lord is based on me and only me, no other man or church. So I will do what's fit for me. I go to church when I need to go. Such people do not fit into God's paradigm, but want him to fit into theirs. Satan's greatest deception is convincing people that he doesn't even exist. We can overcome temptations to unbelief by prayer, frequent confession, and holy communion, fasting, and the daily recitation of the rosary. Catholics must avoid dangers to faith, including provocative fashions, the media, evil movies, lying, the neglect of prayer and the sacraments, hatred, alcoholism, drugs, and pornography. When others leave the faith, all people can do is pray and make sacrifices for them. Let them know the truth, and then it's up to them to listen or not. Some come back, others do not. My dearly beloved in Christ, every sin stems from pride. It's one of the worst sins because it encompasses all the others. Ecclesiasticus states that pride is the beginning of all sin. It was a sin of Satan who refused to serve and adore God. Pride is an excessive love of self and an undue sense of our own superiority or value. Pride is unreasonable because it's a product of lies and falsehood. Cut it out of your life like a cancer. Pride is responsible for wars, divorces, friendships torn apart, children not speaking to their parents, and families that do not speak to each other for years. Hatred is powerful when it's used against others. Self-delusion, the blindness of a soul to its own condition, is one of the worst outcomes of secret pride. In their self-conceit and self-sufficiently self-sufficiency, they have blinded themselves. Jeremiah has written, Thy arrogance has deceived thee, and the pride of thy heart. Proud persons smother the voice of conscience, resist the plainest dictates of common sense, heavy heart and heart, cling to their prejudices, shut out the light, ask no advice nor take it when given, will not listen to any admonition, and commit sins of injustice. St. Peter stated, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We can become humble by practicing charity and obedience, by bowing down to God's will and accepting it without complaining. Forgive those who have hurt you in any way, shape, or form. Be humble and loving. If you want to be holy, be humble. If you want to be very holy, 
be very humble. St. Vincent de Paul has written the most powerful weapon with which to overcome the devil is humility because not knowing how to use it, he doesn't even know how to defend himself from it. St. Augustine said humility is the foundation of all the other virtues. Hence in the soul in which this virtue does not exist, there cannot be any other virtue except in mere appearance. Similarly, it's the best disposition to receive celestial gifts. Many sinners like their immoral lifestyle. Style. Pride never allows them to ask for spiritual help. Once a devil has a grip, he does not let go. Most people continue to sin and don't care about where they end up after death because they don't believe there is a heaven or a hell or a purgatory. They live for the pleasures of this world alone and feel there's nothing after this life. So they say, enjoy it when you can. Our Lady of Fatima said, more souls go to hell for sins of the flesh than for any other reason. Sadly, the majority of young men and women are not pure, holy, and virginal. The demons in hell love this fact. Vanity is a result of too much focus on self and not on spiritual things in God. There's so much materialism and competition among females. Women sometimes dress indecently to impress other women, not just men, because they're in competition and want to show off. Those who dress indecently make use of God's very gifts, their beauty, to offend him and lead others into sin. The de devil successfully uses phones and computers as his tools to destroy souls. Computers and phones have evil games and pornography, along with destructive social media. Most television shows are bad, along with the commercials. The devil controls many things, including the media and movies. Many movies glorify murder, fornication, adultery, and drug abuse. As a result, people are desensitized and do not see these things as evil and harmful to their souls. The devil also uses discouragement against us. Discouragement always springs from wounded and disappointed self-love and pride. We have been hurt. We have not succeeded. We failed. Our self-respect has been wounded. An unkind word has been said to us. Our ambitions have been curbed. Our plans have not been endorsed. A friend has abandoned us or an enemy has been made. Others are praised. We are forgotten. Bad inclinations that we thought dead arise from the depths with renewed vigor. We make no headway in self-conquest despite our prayers and communions. We relapse always into the same old sins and weaknesses. We've tried so hard and we're no better off than we were years ago. And our labors are not appreciated. An inordinate love of self is at the bottom of all these complaints. St. Paul said, to those who love God, all things work together unto good. Our falls into sin can cause us to humble ourselves, experience God's infinite mercy, and be used as stepping stones to something higher by evoking new efforts. We're a failure only when we stop trying and make no attempt to rise and to amend our life. When souls fall into discouragement, panic often ensues and it paralyzes them. Discouragement often leads to despair, not immediately, but gradually. We must make the resolution to never yield to discouragement. Let us determine never to listen to Satan's voice, bidding us to stop trying suggesting the omission of this or that prayer or spiritual exercise, telling us that we shall never succeed, whispering to us that we are failures, that God does not love us, that we shall never be conquerors of ourselves, that, that we shall never be saved. What the saints who have preceded us have accomplished, we also can accomplish through humility, prayer, faith, trust in God, and cooperation with His grace. Satan tries to make us helpless by making us hopeless. If people pray to our Lord and Our Lady, their despair would turn to hope. They need to trust in God, but many people don't trust because they want things now and in their own way. Sometimes sacrifice is needed, as well as patience and prayer. 
Hopelessness can be avoided if we look to the things of heaven because nothing in this world is forever. Many fall into despair and die from drug and alcohol abuse, suicide, and other kinds of reckless behavior. Many people are to the point of despair because they do not trust that God will get them out of the situation. They do not see a way out, but God is the way out, and Our Lady will help them. The following short prayer shows Mary's power. Precious Mother Mary, Mother of Divine Grace, you always make a way where there is no way. Please help me. Most people are full of pride. If they were, are less prideful, pray and surrender to God. He will help them. How can people overcome hopelessness? Be charitable, stop focusing on themselves, and be more focused on others. Help them. Remain close to God in the sacraments. Be loving towards family and friends. St. Teresa of Avila said, let nothing trouble you. Let nothing frighten you. All is quickly passing. God alone changes not. Patient endurance will obtain everything. Whoever has God wants for nothing. God alone suffices. Do not be afraid. Fear is what Satan and the demons want. They want you to be afraid. However, if we're on God's side and under Mary's mantle, we will receive supernatural aid. Many devils appeared in the form of wild beasts to a newly converted Catholic of Japan and tried to frighten him, but he unmoved, bade them do their worst as far as they were permitted by God. I have no arms, he said, to defend myself from you. My only protection is the sweet names of Jesus and Mary. Scarcely had he pronounced those powerful names when the earth opened and swallowed the demons up before his eyes. My dearly beloved in Christ, we must be very cautious of the snares and deceptions of the evil spirits because they still have the power of their angelic nature that far exceeds human nature. Demons like it when priests and people are so afraid of them that they forget to pray to God and the Blessed Virgin Mary who are more powerful than all hell together. Let us fear no evil because the Lord is with us. Prayer united with complete faith and total trust in God will give us the light and strength we need. We also need courage and perseverance. The continued effort to do and achieve something despite difficulties, failure, and opposition. Through prayer, cooperation with God's grace, and humble reliance on God, we will reach our goal. Satan and the demons also blind souls through worldliness, causing them to totally disregard eternity. Souls infected with worldliness seek only sinful pleasures, power, wealth, or success at any cost. They're enslaved to human respect and seek not to please God, but only to please themselves. God never holds a supreme place in their life. Satan is a ruler of this world, and to him its corruption is wonderful. Sadly, most people are corrupt. We must remember that everything in life is temporary and will one day be left behind. The only things that we can take with us into eternity are our merits and our sins. We must avoid hell at all costs by cooperating with God's grace, avoiding the spirit of the world, and putting forth the effort necessary to save our mortal soul. The devil also incites us to gossip because it's a common sin that causes great division in homes, families, churches, etc. Gossip ruins reputations and damages relationships. It can cause division between parishioners, priests, families, couples, and everyone in general, especially if it's, if it's malicious. Communication by phone, text, and social media is not sinful if it's necessary, just, charitable, true, and beneficial to all. It's better to be silent than to be chatty. Chattiness eventually leads to sin because it can turn to gossip and many other things. It's better to be silent than to say unkind things. In hell, gossips will be tormented in the tongue and mouth. Think before you speak. We must guard our speech and treat others as family members since we all belong to God. People should stay quieter 
If they have nothing good to say, they should offer up their silence. Look at the good in everyone instead of the negative. St. Joseph spoke little because he was continually praying. Limit your phone usage. That gadget that people are on for hours and hours prevents them from praying and is generally a waste of time, precious time. That is something Satan and the demons like. They want people to be addicted to their phone because they're on, on it almost every opportunity. Some people can't be without it for an hour, let alone one day. Since phones are frequently used for evil purposes, such as pornography, evil websites, and games, they have become Satan's tabernacle. Demons, remember that demons tempt people to infidelity in many ways. Don't look at filthy, sick websites, movies, books, and magazines. Males must not look at females with lust and perversion in their eyes. Males must guard their eyes, thoughts, and hearts. Females don't wear revealing clothing. If you do, you sin, and you cause men who are watching you to commit sin. Don't go to filthy, sick parties. Avoid hanging around people who will take you off the right track. Hang around good Catholic friends. Excessive drinking and drugs lead to seduction. When people lose control of their senses, they do th th many things they later regret. Cannabis or marijuana is used by many as a medicine or as an escape, but it leads to other drugs. It takes away people's ambition and makes them lazy. They don't want to do anything with their lives. Cannabis is sold as something not so bad, but it affects body and mind. When people give in to temptation and sin, graces are rejected, and it becomes easier to just continue to sin again and again. Unbelief enters to the point that people do not care about what happens to their immortal soul. That's what Satan and the demons want, for people not to believe. Habitual mortal sin leads to a loss of faith. It's a moral, not an intellectual problem. The first step in Satan's plan to cause Catholics to lose their faith is tepidity. He tempts us to perform our religious duties merely through routine without any energy or enthusiasm regarding attendance at Mass, reception of the sacraments, and prayer. This leads to indifference regarding the evil of venial sin. By degrees, the soul becomes callous with no remorse for the evil of venial sin. Venial sins are then scarcely noticed and become habitual. The soul is in a comatose condition, not necessarily fatal, but approaching the danger line and eventually the big fall of mortal sin. Venial sin weakens the soul, desensitizes the conscience, and sets up the, the soul for a mortal fall. Through tepidity, the soul is no longer vigilant to avoid unnecessary occasions of sin or triggers. It, it grows negligent and falls into mortal sin. The next step is hardness of heart, where sins increase in number and gravity. This goes on for months or even years. Ordinary daily duties are performed, but the soul is addicted and enslaved to a secret vice. The final step is that the corruption within the soul enslaved to mortal sin becomes evident to others. The person's behavior gives many exterior signs of the horrible condition of his or her soul. At this point, the person stops saying prayers, gives up confession, misses mass with regularity, no longer avoids the occasion of sin, habitually rejects God's grace, and is reluctant to put forth any effort to be good. This sets up a pattern. The person demands self-satisfaction and his or her vices and weaknesses take control. Can such a tragic state of soul ever be cured? The soul is in serious danger of going to hell. Nevertheless, with God, all things are possible. Our Lord can cure a soul bound in sin, but it must first want to break its evil habits, be vigilant, pray, practice self-denial, and receive the sacraments. God's mercy is infinite, but the soul must avail itself of it while there's still time. Heaven is full of repentant sinners who were the recipients of God's infinite mercy. 
My dear beloved in Christ, the forces of evil are waging war against us. How can we defeat them in this spiritual warfare? The following will be, provide grace, power, and protection. Frequent attendance at the holy sacrifice of the mass. Frequent reception of the sacraments. Family prayer every day, including the recitation of the rosary. Adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Practicing devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Prayers to St. Michael. Fasting and self-denial. Getting your home blessed. And the use of sacramentals, especially the brown scapular, the St. Benedict medal, the miraculous medal, the rosary, holy water, etc. The rosary is Our Lady's favorite prayer. Satan and the demons hate it because it attacks and weakens them. They scream when they see these beads and tremble when we begin to pray the rosary. Demons try to prevent us from praying the rosary because it saves souls, snatches souls in danger of hell, and converts sinners. Pray the rosary as it should be prayed. When we devoutly pray the rosary, the Blessed Virgin Mary sends graces down to help us. The rosary protects us from sinning. Our Lady of Fatima told Lucia that the rosary would have special efficacy in these times. Prayer gives us light, strength, consolation, pardon, help, grace, and love. All those who burn in hell did not pray or prayed little. Prayer is the first step toward God, and it's a decisive step. To him who prays with perseverance, little by little, God gives so much light, so much strength, that even the most debased sinner will at the end come to salvation. St. Alphonsus Maria Ligori said, he who prays will certainly save his soul. He who does not pray will certainly lose his soul. Prayer is powerful against Satan and the evil spirits. Therefore, they attempt to distract us during prayer or cause us to shorten them or omit them altogether. My dear beloved in Christ, pray much, pray much, especially the rosary. We must have a consistent daily prayer schedule. We can't be up and down and only pray when something is wrong or we're afraid something bad is going to happen. St. Teresa of Avila said it's unlikely that a person would save his soul if he did not spend at least 10 minutes per day in prayer. In hell, they know who prays and who doesn't. Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary rescues numberless souls from the devil. Our Lady is the cause of our joy, but she is the cause of the demise and torment of demons. On Mount Carmel, centuries before the birth of our Lord, the prophet Elias saw forming over the sea a small cloud in the shape of a foot, foretelling the women of Genesis who would crush the head of the serpent. She is terrible to the evil spirits, crushes their head, and sends them back to the pit of hell. Demons hated Mary since the beginning of time because she is human and so holy, humble, good, and powerful. Our Lady protects people and leads them to her divine Son. She is our spiritual mother and clearly sees our needs and dangers. As a mother of mercy, she's moved to compassion and hastens to help us, console us, provide for us, and defend us, especially when we're devoted to her and confidently and lovingly invoke her aid. St. Alphonsus Mirligori said, a devout servant of Mary will never perish. This means they will not go to hell. The Blessed Virgin Mary will fight for their soul at the end of their lives, but they must pray. She's always by our Lord's side, helping him, always praying for everyone, asking mercy for everyone. St. Bonaventure says that the devils fly before her face as wax melts before the fire. When they hear her name, they tremble, and many are the victories over them which the servants of Mary have gained by the mere invocation of her name. A tame parrot that was kept in the house learned the Ave Maria and often repeated it. It happened one day that escaping from its cage in the open air, this parrot was caught by a falcon. The poor thing squeezed in his talons, cried, Ave Maria, Ave Maria. The falcon fell dead on the ground, and the parrot in triumph sang, Ave Maria, Ave Maria. 
St. Louis Minim offered summarized total consecration to Jesus through Mary when he said we should live by Mary, with Mary, in Mary, and for Mary. This is explained by Thomas a Kempis. Salute Mary, think of Mary, invoke Mary, honor Mary, commend yourself to Mary, remain with Mary in your house, and walk with Mary when you go out. Rejoice with Mary, grieve with Mary, work with Mary, pray with Mary. With Mary, carry Jesus in your arms, Stand with Mary at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Live and die with Jesus and Mary. Do this and you will live. Let us perseveringly pray for the conversion of sinners, especially our family members and loved ones. Many prayers united with sacrifices can snatch sinners from the devil's grasp, even though it may take time. Be kind, loving, forgiving, merciful, and charitable to, be other, to others. Be as Christ-like and Mary-like as you can. Read good books. Avoid the temptations the world uses to seduce so many souls, pornography, drugs, alcohol, and many other things. My dear beloved in Christ, life is not a preseason game or a dress rehearsal. You have only one life to get it right. Life is a training ground provided by God to sanctify and save your immortal soul, to build character, and to develop qualities that will make your society and nation a better place. With each passing day, time slips by faster and faster, like sand through an hourglass. You're only allotted so much time before you die. Then life is over, the time for mercy ceases. As the battle for your mortal soul rages, there must be no giving in, no throwing up your arms in hopelessness. God's grace and Our Lady's intercession will sustain you. It's your duty to pray and ask for God's help. Cooperate with His graces, keep the faith, and never consent to mortal sin. You must remind yourself daily that after, when all is said and done, it's not your parents, friends, or neighbors who will be held accountable for the choices you have made. As you live, so shall you die, and so shall be your e eternity. You reap what you sow. This life is a preparation for the next. Jacinta said if only people knew what eternity is, they would do everything to change their lives. Heaven or hell, whichever it be, is only the logical continuation of the kind of life you've lived here on earth. He who continually fears hell will never fall into it, but he who is negligent will undoubtedly fall. I'll conclude with a story. Francis Arellano, a student in the famous University of Alcalá in Spain, was most devout to the Blessed Virgin, who was so troubled with doubts of his salvation that he was continually tormented with the most horrible fears of his damnation. He was on the very brink of despair. One day, when he had been more than usually troubled by these thoughts, the Blessed Virgin appeared to him, accompanied by a multitude of saints and angels. And she said to him, My son, why do you fear? Why do you not confide in me? Do you not know that I am the mother of compassion and mercy? Look at this book. It is a book of life in which are written the names of all those who are saved. Here is your name placed among those of the predestined, together with the names of all those that will be saved by your preaching. The young man, raising his eyes, saw with infinite delight his own name written in letters of gold. But however much he tried to read the names of the others, it was impossible for him to do so. The amiable lady then, smiling, shut the book and giving him, her benediction, disappeared, and with her departed all the troubles of the young man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.